Hello dear friends. Let's discuss today about disaccharides. I have divided that into four parts. In the first part, we will learn how the glycosidic linkage is formed. And in the next sessions, we will see lactose, popular disaccharides like lactose, maltose and sucrose. So let's go to our session. In this small session, we will have clear idea of the glycosidic bond formation. See, the glycosidic bond is formed between the sugars. Except monosaccharides, all other sugars means disaccharides, oligosaccharides, polysaccharides. Every sugar except monosaccharide, it is bound by some linkage. That linkage is called glycosidic linkage. Glycos means sugar. The linkage in the sugars is called glycosidic linkage. This figure, it gives you a clear idea of how the glycosidic linkage is formed. See here, this is the glucose, ring structure of glucose. OH, OH, H, OH. Likewise, this is another mole of glucose. This is also glucose. Two glucose units, they are linked to form a disaccharide. Let's see how this disaccharide is formed. There is a linkage here. Can you observe? This linkage is called glycosidic bond. See here, this is an example for the maltose. This disaccharide is nothing but maltose. In maltose, two monosaccharides are involved. This is the first carbon of the first sugar. This is the sugar, glucose. The first carbon is this one. And remember, for glucose, the functional group is present at C1 carbon. See, this is the first carbon and here is the functional group that is present. Likewise, this is also the glucose, same glucose. And here, the functional group is present. It is also present at the which position? First position and the functional group is present. And these are in alpha configuration because the functional group, your ca carbon is present in the below the plane of the ring. See, in the glycosidic bond formation, C1, C1 means first carbon. C1 of one sugar is linked with the C4 of another sugar. See, this is the first carbon, second, third and now this becomes the fourth carbon. Which one? This carbon is nothing but the fourth carbon, fifth carbon and this is the sixth carbon. In the formation of, in this example, in the formation of glycosidic bond, C1 of one monosaccharide is linked to the C4. This is the C4 carbon of another monosaccharide forming a glycosidic bond. This bond is called a glycosidic bond which is formed between which sugars? C1 of one sugar and C4 of another sugar. Now, this bond is called 1, 4. 1, 2, 4. 1, 4 means C1 of one sugar. 4 means C4 of another sugar. So, now this becomes the 1, 4 glycosidic linkage. Listen, this is only one example of glycosidic bond. A glycosidic bond can be formed alpha 1, 4 glycosidic linkage, 1, 6 glycosidic linkage, 1, 2 glycosidic linkage. Likewise, they may be alpha or beta. If the sugar is in alpha, it is called alpha glycosidic linkage. If the sugar is in the beta configuration, it is called as beta glycosidic linkage. In this example, it is only alpha 1, 4 glycosidic linkage. Is it clear? Now, let's go to the disaccharides, properties of disaccharides in general. Disaccharides, as you know, that they contain how many sugar units? They contain two sugar units. See here. Sugars, they also, on hydrolysis, they gives two moles of monosaccharides. Because they are made of two sugars, on hydrolysis, they give two moles of monosaccharides. Examples are, we have seen in the diagram, this is the example for maltose. Maltose, after breaking, so whenever this bond, glycosidic bond is broken down, it gives rise to 
two sugar units and these two sugars uh, are nothing but glucose maltose gives glucose and glucose on hydrolysis what lactose gives lactose on hydrolysis on breakdown yields galactose and glucose because lactose is made of one mole of galactose and one mole of glucose that is why it gives galactose and glucose and this is how the hydrolysis takes place this is the general formula of disaccharides see here the general formula of disaccharides is c12 h22o11 and the hydrolysis takes place in the presence of water remember in the glycosidic bond formation water molecule is removed that is why whenever it is broken down it happens in the presence of water so in the presence of water it is broken down to give rise to two monosaccharide units and on hydrolysis see as i told you on hydrolysis they give how many monosaccharide units two monosaccharide units because they are nothing but disaccharides and usually these disaccharides are sweet to taste they can be crystallized and usually are water soluble substances they are usually hydrolyzed by enzymes or dilute acids for example maltose see this is the example for maltose now this is hydrolyzed by an enzyme called maltase likewise lactose is hydrolyzed by lactase they can be hydrolyzed by enzymes or they can be hydrolyzed or broken down by the dilute acids and the general formula is c12 h22o11 and these disaccharides they are of two types two types of disaccharides we can see what are these two types of disaccharides one type of are called reducing sugars another type are called non reducing sugars what is the difference between reducing and non reducing let's see sugars which contain at least one free functional group are called reducing sugars remember we are talking about disaccharides disaccharides contain how many sugars two sugars if among the two sugars if at least one free functional group is there then they are considered as what reducing sugars why they are called as reducing sugars because they reduce the benedict solution and failing solution that is why they are called as reducing sugars and example for the reducing disaccharides or nothing but maltose and lactose below is the example for maltose let's see how it became reducing disaccharide see maltose is made of two glucose units c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 and c6 one sugar unit one glucose unit and this is another glucose unit remember for glucose for all doses where the functional group is present c1 carbon so for this glucose for this monosaccharide here functional group is present for this monosaccharide c1 carbon here the functional group is present and remember in the formation of maltose c1 of one glucose is involved in the glycosidic linkage with the c4 of another sugar thereby 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage is formed and now see this right side sugar this sugar this is also glucose but here what happened the functional group where the functional group for this sugar is present at c1 carbon is this c1 carbon involved in the glycosidic linkage no only c4 carbon for this sugar is involved okay and now this c1 carbon where the functional group was present is free that means it is free to react with the benedict and failing solution thereby forming the colored product that is why this disaccharide which disaccharide this is the example for maltose it is the example for the reducing disaccharide likewise lactose is also the reducing disaccharide and let's go to the non reducing sugars if you are clear about the reducing sugars you can very easily understand what the non reducing sugars are these are the sugars which do not contain at least one free functional group remember we are talking about the disaccharides disaccharides contain two sugars and one sugar is involved usually one functional group is involved in the glycosidic linkage 
glycosidic bond formation but the other would, would be usually free but there are some sugars where they do not contain at least one free functional group group two free functional group two functional groups are there among among them not even a single functional group is ready to react with the benedict solution that is why they do not react with the benedict and failing solution that is why they are called as non reducing sugars the best example for this one is sucrose see in sucrose the sucrose you know it is nothing but the common table sugar what the sugar which we are using at our homes is nothing but sucrose and this sucrose it is made of one mole of glucose and one mole of fructose glucose is in pyranose structure fructose is in the furanose ring structure we will study that in the in our uh, next session or previous session you can see them glucose for glucose where the functional group is present remember for all doses at c1 carbon the functional group is present but for ketoses ketoses are the sugars which contain ketone group ketone group whenever it is present where it is present it is present at the second position okay here in the formation of glycosidic linkage in sucrose c1 carbon of glucose and c2 carbon of fructose are involved that means which are involved the functional group of glucose and the functional group of fructose are involved in the formation of what in the formation of glycosidic linkage okay did you understand the glycosidic linkage in sucrose is formed between the functional groups of glucose and fructose is there any functional group free here no this is the fifth carbon here this is not the functional group and here for glucose also there is no free functional group that is why sucrose it cannot react with the benedict's solution okay that is why sucrose is called as non reducing sugar these are the examples for the reducing and non reducing sugars let's see let's see your comprehension when you answer these questions answer the following questions definitely stay on this slide and try to answer all the questions if you do if you cannot answer go back to the video and listen carefully you can definitely answer these questions very well and if you have any queries or doubts please comment in the comment section thanks for watching